Welcome back to Most Amazing Top 10. I'm your host, Taylor McWaters. Here are the top 10 conjuring items that cursed Ed and Lorraine Warren. This is a dark one. Let's do it. Kicking off the list at number 10, Pearls of Death. If you've seen Annabelle Comes Home, the first item on today's list should ring a familiar bell. The character Daniela in the film, she tries to communicate to a loved one beyond the grave. Now, in order to do so, she puts on the museum's mourning bracelet. That's a big no-no. Yeah, we don't touch things in haunted museums, my friends. Now, there isn't a mourning bracelet in the real occult museum, but there is such thing as the pearls of death. Those are very real. Those are also lovely, might I add. These pearls were added to the museum after a woman claimed they were strangling her as soon as she put them on. Yeah, the second this poor woman put these pearls on, she needed people around her to help yank the pearls from her neck. It felt like they were choking her to death. Yeah, these haunted pearls have nothing on Martha Wayne. Nothing. Number nine, cursed mirror. The amount of movies I watched growing up where the killer was in the reflection of the mirror and they close it nice and slowly, ah, so scary. Reflections are scary in horror movies and apparently in real life as well. There's a cursed mirror in the occult museum and its history is pretty haunting. The previous owner was a man in New Jersey and he liked to spend hours and hours every single night trying to beckon spirits through this mirror. He was desperately trying to contact loved ones that have passed away, which is tragic, but I don't think sitting in front of a mirror asking for spirits is best for your mental health. You know, there's other ways to cope. A few weeks passed and faces eventually did appear, haunting demonic faces, so terrifying that it sent the man into a mental institution. How sad is that? This type of conjuring is called crystalmancy. It's when a spirit possesses a shiny object, like a window, a mirror, a pocket watch, you name it. If it's shiny, chances are it's haunted. Who knows? As I'm looking into the, re the reflection of this teleprompter, I'm like, uh, huh, oops. Number eight, werewolf paw. In Annabelle Comes Home, we see in the museum a werewolf paw sitting on a shelf. And then later on in the movie, we see a real werewolf outside of the Warrens' house. Now, this is most likely a nod to a London case involving the Warrens, where a man was behaving like a werewolf. Yeah, he would just flip like that and become one. Not physically or anything, he wouldn't grow hair or teeth, but he used his fingers like claws, and he would growl, and there'd be saliva dripping from his face, and of course, sadly, he attacked people on the streets of London, so it was the real deal. Everyone's calling everyone trying to figure this out. This man was William Ramsey, and the Warrens believed this to be the same spirit responsible for transforming humans into wolves. In 1989, the solution was for Ed and Lorraine Warren to bring Bill to the States, then performed an exorcism, turning the man back into his, you know, regular, less growl self. Could there be a real wolf paw in the museum responsible for the werewolf of London case? Probably. Most likely. All signs point to yes. Number seven, the organ. Music is said to bring life into the room, but this time it's a bit too literal. Just a bit. There's an organ in the occult museum that belonged to Ed and Lorraine Warren for a while after they found it in, of course, a haunted house. Authorities cleaned it out and reached out to Ed to see what he wanted to do with such a thing. And after a few nights, he heard the organ start to play by itself. Dum dum dum. So scary. In total, there were three incidents where Ed thought somebody had broke into the museum. He heard the organ being played, but by the time he arrived, the room was empty. Nothing had been touched. There were no visitors, of course, and the organ, zoom just happy to stop. So scary. A priest came to bless the museum and the music eventually did stop. Before her passing, Lorraine Warren said to USA Today that the prayers do work in this museum and that they blind the evil, much like an electric fence does for a dog. Tony Spera, son-in-law of the late demonologists, Ed and Lorraine Warren, he's now watching the museum full time and he doesn't ever intend to destroy or leave any of the items in the museum. He's gonna take care of those. Thanks, Tony. Thank you. You're literally doing the Lord's work. Number six, cursed brick. Perhaps one of the least terrifying items on this list is a brick from Borley Rectory, AKA a brick from one of the most haunted houses in all of England. Lovely, we love that brick. This house was originally built back in 1862. It was built for the rector of Borley, but after a fire in 1939, it was never the same again. And then it was finally demolished in 1944. But before its final days, the Daily Mirror printed about this haunted house. Harry Price, a paranormal researcher at the time, reported sightings of a ghost nun or a ghost car that would happen to drive by, as well as footsteps and unexplained sounds on the property. Yeah, a little piece of the haunted home now sits in the Warren Occult Museum today. Just a nice, scary brick. Didn't know those were a thing. Number five, 
the wedding dress. Your wedding dress is supposed to remind you of the best day of your life. So what's this dress doing in the Warren's Occult Museum? What's the history behind this one? The dress, once it was on, would possess the owner and make them attack their significant other. While that part is made up for the Hollywood side of the story, the real dress supposedly belonged to the White Lady of Union Graveyard, Connecticut. The real dress comes from 2009, so it's pretty recent as far as hauntings go. Route 59 is also a hot spot when it comes to spotting the spirit of the White Lady. Yeah, she'll just appear on the road while you're driving and then scare the shit out of you. I can't even read a billboard while I drive, let alone spot a ghost. That's that's crazy. The hand-eye coordination for that? No way. I'd miss all those ghosts. Number four, black magic dolls. Okay, before we get to that doll on our list, we have some honorable mentions who keep her company in the occult museum. We love that. Tony Sparrow believes there's a voodoo doll just casually sitting around in this museum. Yeah, there's a doll that looks like it would resemble somebody and historically, if you do this, add some dark magic, some voodoo to the mix, you can actually harm the person the doll is representing. I'm not sure who this is, but I hope they're okay. It doesn't look like a comfortable situation in that glass case. Also, the glass case around the voodoo doll has me convinced more than anything. There's also a doll with no mouth in the museum. That's awesome. Bet she's, bet she's full of secrets behind that non-mouth. There's another doll that has markings on her face. She has big eyes. This time, mouth included. We love those. Always able to talk back with the demonic voice. Then there's a silly clown looking doll. And by silly, I mean equally as haunting. Number three, the Annabelle doll. Yeah, we can't have a list on cursed objects in the Warren Museum and not mention the movie star herself, the Annabelle doll. Here she is, fabulous. Her appearance was made to look even more haunting in the movie, but I'd argue that the real doll and the real deal is much creepier. Yeah, the real life Raggedy Ann doll was accurately represented in the movies, says Tony Spera. See, back in the 70s, a nurse was given the Raggedy Ann doll from her mother. So these two nurses were living together in Hartford, Connecticut, and they both reported the doll moving around on its own. Things got serious when they discovered a piece of parchment paper that said, help me, written in crayon. That's terrifying. Then the doll began to move in front of their very eyes one morning during breakfast. Yeah, animal's arms just lifted onto the table and then they freaked out. They immediately called the psychic, and the psychic told the nurses that Annabelle was a spirit stuck in the doll. I grew up watching Chucky. I don't do dolls, okay? Haunted or not, hard pass. Any doll. No, thank you. Even Buzz Lightyear, I'm like, nope. Number two, music box. We had to include one of the creepiest elements of the Conjuring movie, the parent family music box. Here we go. Director James Wan wanted to use the music box in the first film because, well, like I said earlier, mirrors are creepy. They add for great suspense in movies, all that jazz. But also, this was a real haunted artifact that's in the real museum today, so it's not made up just for spooks. The music box part of the movie actually scared the shit out of me. Like I said, any mirror scene, I can't do it. I just eat my hoodie. I just hide in whatever I'm wearing. They always do it slow too, and it's always like the slow jack-in-the-box music. Is this real? This is all real, these poor girls. Specifically April, the youngest of the parent children, she found this antique in the house and she used it to communicate to another spirit named Rory. Yeah, just a spirit named Rory. He sounds friendly, Rory, nice. In the movie, this was a happy ending, but in real life, the Bathsheba Sherman curse was never resolved. Which leads us to our big bad, number one. Number one, the photograph of Bathsheba Sherman. You always see these UFO videos or ghost photos or footage, whatever. They're always filmed with a Blackberry curve. It's just absolute rubbish. It's nothing, it's just grainy. You can't tell what you're looking at. There's never clear evidence of anything nowadays at all. Until now. Yeah, we may just have a clear photo with the real witch, the real Bathsheba Sherman. The witch in the original Conjuring film. We have a picture of her. This is so scary. Do you wanna see it? Let's look at it. Of course we're ending on this note, here we go. This photo is from the Parent family farmhouse back when it was still the Arnold estate. This was 1885, so the witch was most likely in her 70s at this time. And this witch lived next door to the farm, and although we never really will find out, many believe she's the lady in the middle closest to the camera. Also the fact that she's wearing some sort of mask and she's standing by herself, all black. I'm getting witch vibes just from this one photo alone. I also feel like nobody wanted to stand next to a literal witch in a photo, so it's kind of obvious who's who in this one. I couldn't blame them. Imagine doing a silly one with Bathsheba Sherman. You're like, hey, bunny ears, don't curse me, awesome. Those are the top 10 Codring House items that cursed Ed and Lorraine Warren. I'm your host, Taylor McWaters, and I'll see you next time on Most Amazing Top 10. Bye. This house was originally built back in 19, hmm, no. The previous owner was a man in New Jersey, and he liked to spend hours and hours every single night trying to beckon spirits through this mirror. Scary tale up in this oh, shit. I was like, this is the one, this is the spirit. This is the one he tried to hunt. Yo, spooky Tay. 
All right. <laughs>